This is our third lecture in the series from chapter uh, 13, and this time we're going to be talking about biomass. So if you look here on this diagram from your book, um, it shows all the different types of energy and where they hold, uh, where they get their, the original source of that energy. So here we're looking um, today at this section of the chart, which includes photosynthesis that was done by modern plants and algae. So that would be um, wood becoming charcoal. It could be plant parts that are ingested by animals and become manure. It could actually be burning crop residues and then cre also creation of liquid biofuels. So let's look at the three types of biomass energy. Um, biomass in general refers to anything that comes uh, from something that was growing. When we talk about solid biomass, we're talking about plant and animal material which includes wood, um, dung, grasses, and crop residues. And these things typically are burned in homes. Uh, we do sell charcoal you know, for use in barbecues and things like that, but usually biomass is burned in homes and used for heat or for cooking fires. Now, we're if we're talking about biogas, um, biogas is produced by bacteria, and it's 60% methane and 40% carbon dioxide. And this is... Um, a product of bacterial um, anaerobic digestion and biogas can be collected and burned in engines the same way natural gas can be and it can also be used for um, different types of fires in the home. Then the final one are biofuels. Now when we talk about biofuels we're typically referring to the oil um, things that can be used in cars or for transportation so that would be bio um, biodiesel which is oil that is used as a diesel substitute or ethanol, which is used as either a gasoline additive or a substitute for gasoline. So um, which of the following are forms of biomass energy? And go ahead and choose the correct answer. Is it A, charcoal burned in a small house stove? B, gas collected from bacterial fermentation? C, ethanol distilled from sugarcane? Or D, all of the above? and go ahead and think about that, choose your answer. And the correct answer is D, all of the above. Those are all forms of biomass energy. Um, key distinction there is it's modern photosynthesis. So modern photosynthesis being used for fuel of some sort. All right, so let's talk about benefits to biofuels. First of all, biofuels are potentially renewable if they're managed properly. They present a renewable resource, which means that we can use them for many, many years without them being used up. They have the ability to replace fossil fuel tech, fossil fuels if the technology develops. Um, right now, we don't have quite the efficiency that we need to make biofuels um, a viable alternative to fossil fuels. Right now, they're a good supplement. But if the technology develops, we can replace potentially replace fossil fuels. And um, there's also a benefit because there's no net increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And I'll talk about that on the next slide to kind of explain the math of it. So even though when we burn a biofuel, it releases carbon dioxide, it's not increasing the total concentration in the atmosphere. And then finally, if we're using things like crop residues, we're reducing, in a sense, you could say we're reducing waste. We're using up a material that otherwise would have just been tilled back into the soil and allowed to decompose. So it's not like we're growing something new for, this, for that particular biofuel. If we're using crop residues from a food crop, we're using up something that was already there. So let's explain that um, net carbon thing, the whole no net carbon thing. This is an important concept for you to understand. So we're talking about the difference between modern carbon, carbon that's already present day a part of the carbon cycle, versus old carbon that hasn't been a part of the carbon cycle for many, many millions of years. Sorry for all that, those words there. Let's um, go through that bit by bit. So first of all, all forms of biomass fuel will release CO2 when burned. So they, it doesn't, there's no way to get around it. When you burn a biomass, any kind of biomass, you're releasing carbon dioxide. The important distinction is that when you burn biomass fuel, it's carbon dioxide that was already a part of the carbon cycle. So, you know, a year ago, that carbon dioxide, or the carbon that makes up the plant tissue, used to be carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and it got absorbed by the plant and incorporated into the tissue, 
and then when we burn it, we're just going to release it back to the atmosphere. So we're not increasing the total amount of carbon because the plant consumes the carbon as it does photosynthesis, and then we burn the plant and it releases the carbon again. So it's all part of the same cycle. There's no net increase, no overall increase. Now the difference here is that when we burn fossil fuels, fossil fuels represent carbon that was not a part of, not currently a part of the carbon cycle, and it's actually been sequestered. It's been hidden from the carbon cycle for a long time. So when we burn fossil fuels, what we're really doing is we're taking carbon from under the ground that hasn't seen the light of day in you know thousands or millions of years and we're burning it and releasing new carbon dioxide. So it's old carbon, but it's, it's new to the cycle. We're bringing this addition of carbon dioxide back into the carbon cycle, and it's increasing the total concentration of carbon dioxide on our planet. So that would be the distinction there between modern carbon and old carbon. So the bottom line here is that if trees are burned and replanted, or if crops are burned and replanted, there's no net increase in the, atmos in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. All right, so those are the benefits. What about some of the drawbacks to fossil fuel or to biofuels? So first of all, one of the biggest ones um, that people raise as a as a drawback is the fact that this land that we're using to grow crops could have been used to grow food instead. So in a time when we are looking at many people starving in other countries, we're sitting here using our crop land to grow stuff that we're going to turn into gas to drive our cars. So um, if we see a continued shift towards biofuels, uh, some experts fear that this may compromise food security in some regions, particularly Africa, um, and then also Southeast Asia, possibly South America. So whenever we use land for, for fuel, we're reducing the land available for food. Now the, the other thing is that biofuels typically rely on a single crop, and so we also have that problem with high-intensity monoculture. Remember, monoculture is growing one crop. Um, we're doing high input of fertilizer, high input of pesticides, high input of water, and that can degrade the local habitat. So that's another problem with biofuel production. Uh, there's also an increased demand for fresh water. The more you're growing crops for fuels, the more you're going to need water to irrigate those crops. <clears throat> and in areas like the Midwest, we're already in a drought and the aquifers are low. Um, the aquifers are emptying. Where it's not a time when we really want to be increasing our demand for fresh water. Uh, also, biodiesel, especially the stuff that's made from corn, has actually already resulted in an increase in corn prices and a decrease in food availability in other regions. So the United States, because of our subsidies, we're able to make corn very cheaply, and um, that's putting a pressure, that the increased demand for corn is actually putting a pressure on prices other places. So we're seeing prices rise, and then people who typically eat corn as part of their diet are no longer, no longer able to afford it because it's become so expensive. All right, quiz question for you. Last slide. Um, although biofuels reduce net carbon dioxide emissions, issues have been raised with them because A, biofuels reduce pesticide and fertilizer use. B, biofuel production may compromise food security in certain regions. Or C, biofuels are a more efficient use of resources than traditional fossil fuels. So go ahead and think about that. Choose the correct answer. And pause if you need more time. So the correct answer is B, biofuel production may compromise food security in certain regions. This goes back to the principle, the idea that if we are using our cropland to grow fuels, we're not able to use that cropland to grow food. So that concludes our lecture for today. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know, and otherwise I will see you in class.